Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut. This is going to be my five things you must do after you install Fedora video. The point of this video is to give you a uh, running head start into the Fedora ecosystem, or really Linux in general. If you're a first time Linux user, Fedora is actually a pretty good start. It's not really one of the distributions that's specifically optimized for the new user, but considering you're watching a video like this, you're in the right place to get started. So without wasting too much time, let's go ahead and dive onto our Fedora ecosystem. Chances are, if you're running Fedora, you're going to be in GNOME. They do have other spins with other desktop environments. And if you're not sure what you like, I do recommend you try out and you play with various environments because different environments are gonna work differently with how you are used to uh, working on your computer. But this right here is just default GNOME with GNOME 40. Uh, most of these steps will work perfectly fine, whether if you're using KDE, Cinnamon, whatever. And the very first thing, I just installed this, I just basically created my username, and the very first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is fire up the terminal. Now one thing, um, a lot of new users are kinda scared of using the terminal, and it's not really anything to be scared of necessarily, it's a fairly simple tool, but being that you're in Linux, you're gonna want to kinda start getting used to this, it makes things a lot easier. Granted, basically everything that we're going to do in this video, you could do with a uh, graphical component. In order to save some time and be a little more simplistic, we're just going to use the terminal. And you can just copy and paste a lot of the commands that I'm going to be using. So before we even update our system or anything, we're actually going to go ahead and update our DNF config. And to do that, we're just going to go sudo nano-etc slash dnf. Just like that, hit enter, type in your password, and then it's going to bring up this. Now, one thing you may be asking yourself is what is DNF? Simply put, DNF is the default package manager for Fedora. With DNF, you can install, do updates, remove packages, and it uses RPM packages, so you could download any RPM off the internet and go ahead and use that. And DNF is an updated version of YUM, which is a package manager that they used to use in uh, Fedora 21 and earlier. But overall, I'm, I'm really happy with using DNF, and the only really issue that I notice with it that you're gonna wanna watch out for is it is case sensitive. So that's really the only thing. What we're gonna to do here is add a few things. I'll have this below so you can just copy and paste it, but we're going to go fastest mirror equals true. So by default, it will use the fastest available resource to download packages. Next, you're going to want to add in max parallel downloads equals 10. So by default, it only downloads one package at a time. And if you have decent internet speeds, you could download a lot more and get through a lot of your system updates and package installations and things like that a lot easier. And we're gonna add one more thing, and that is default yes equals true. Uh, one thing in your in Fedora that you're gonna notice compared to other Linux distributions is no is like the default selection. And we want that to be Y, so you just hit enter and install whatever you need to install. So to save this out, just control O, enter, control X, and now we are back into our terminal. And now from here, we can actually go ahead, step two, update our system. And to do that, it's just sudo dnf update. Go ahead and hit enter. And it's not gonna ask for my password because we typed in sudo just a minute ago. And it's gonna run through the process and pull all the packages that it needs to download and install. There we go. And you can see down here, this is what I was just talking about with the default yes. So Y is capitalized, and that means that is currently the, the default. So instead of having to go Y enter, we only have to hit enter, and then it will proceed with uh, downloading and installing all of these updates. Now that our system is completely up to date, what we could go ahead and do is step three, and that is to enable the RPM community repositories. Now what this is, is kind of comparable to the AUR. The reason why uh, Fedora has this is whether for legal reasons or just because they simply don't want to maintain too many packages. There's really not going to be a lot of default packages available in those Fedora repositories, so that's where RPM Fusion comes in. An example of things that you're going to want to get from RPM Fusion are maybe like Microsoft fonts, uh, OBS Studio is in there, and really a lot of different things. So the commands for RPM Fusion aren't really something that I'm going to want to type out. So what we're going to go ahead and do is jump over to this workspace here. And this is actually docs.fedoraproject.org. I'd highly recommend you check out this website and go through the adding and managing software. And this will basically go through a what I'm covering in this video and a lot more. So if you want to learn more, I do recommend you check this out. 
And here is where I'm gonna link so you could get some of these commands. So this is enabling the RPM Fusion repositories. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and select this command here, give that a copy, and then jump on over to our other workspace here and simply paste that in. Type in your sudo password, and then it's gonna go ahead and confirm with you if you'd like to add the free repositories. You could hit uh, enter for Y, or if you didn't change those defaults, you're gonna have to hit Y and enter. And now you can see that we've added the free RPM repositories. Now if we go ahead, head back over here, now these are the non-free repositories. If you're somebody who's super into only using free and open source things, you're gonna want to not use this, but me, I honestly uh, don't care all that much. I, I do care a little bit, but not enough to not add this repository. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And when it's all done, it's gonna go ahead and confirm this with us. Yes, and now we've added those repositories. So now you will have access to a lot more software, whether if you're gonna use a DNF in the terminal or you're gonna use a graphical user interface um, app store such as the GNOME app store or uh, Discover through KDE Plasma. And now what we're gonna to want to do, step number four is enable media codecs. One thing you may notice is like, if you go to YouTube and try to play a video, depending on what distribution or what uh, desktop environment you're running, you may run into issues. And to fix that, we're gonna to want to go ahead and install plugins for playing movies and music. And here is the procedure. So we're gonna simply go ahead and copy and paste these over to our terminal. So paste that in. And we already entered our password in recently, so it's not gonna have us do that again. And before I confirm this, just so we kind of note what's going on here, you could always scroll up and check out everything that you're doing. So this is everything it's installing. So it's all these different G streamer plugins, all their dependencies, and you get a full transaction of the summary. This is gonna be a 260 megabyte download. And after it installs and unarchives itself and all that, it's gonna be just under 500 megabytes. So let's go ahead and enter to confirm that and it's gonna begin the process. We are copying and pasting this directly from the Fedora document. So importing a GPG keys are probably gonna be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna paste in the next command, hit enter. And this is to install the lame package. So let's go ahead and enter and let that do its thing. And then for these media codecs, the very last thing we're gonna do is a group upgrade command. So go ahead, add that in, hit enter, and then let's go ahead and confirm this upgrade. And now we have our media codecs in Fedora. So now everything's set up to the point that everything should work and you should be able to get the packages that you need. Now, step five isn't gonna be anything too specific. Um, what you're gonna want to go ahead and do is start customizing your desktop environment and adding in various software. Now in GNOME, personally, I, I am not a fan of GNOME in its default layout anyways. I've uploaded a video going over 10 of personally my favorite GNOME extensions that you could go ahead and add to this to make it a lot more usable, customizable, gives you a lot of things on your system that you're gonna want anyway, so I recommend you check out that if you're in GNOME. Alternatively, if you're in KDE, go over to system settings, run through all your settings, including your appearance settings, add widgets. I have a video on some of the best KDE Plasma widgets that you could go ahead and add to your, uh, whether if it's your desktop or your bottom taskbar. And then once you completely customize your desktop environment, you're gonna want to go ahead and get all the software that you need. Now, if you're not too familiar with the software that you want, Luckily, I have two different videos going over the 10 top, well, my top 10 Linux applications. So I'd recommend you check that out. But just some default things you're gonna to want to do is go into Firefox or uh, download whatever web browser you would prefer, whether that be Chromium, Brave. You could throw Microsoft Edge on here now if that is your thing. You could go ahead and download Steam to play your games. You could get VirtualBox if you want to go ahead and play around and try out different Linux distributions. But with all of that said, those are my five things that I think you must do once you install Fedora. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention is uh, use a backup utility. If you're using the BetterFS file system, go ahead and look that up and learn how to use that. Otherwise, you could go ahead and install TimeShift, and that's a really good backup utility. I have a tutorial on that as well. But I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. 
We have two producer level supporters, Mitchell Valentino and Phil Mack. Thank you guys so much. And thank you to everybody else who is either a Techie Techie Plus, whether that be on YouTube or Patreon. If you go ahead, click below and join through YouTube, you get access to like emojis and badges and stuff. But if you don't really care about that, Patreon is a great platform and you could go ahead and support me over there. Uh, with all that said, make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell as I will be coming out with my uh, 30 days in Fedora review in about a week or two. So do be looking forward to that. And with all of that said, I hope you have a beautiful day and goodbye.